Now, let's get to this transgender debate, which has caused all sorts of consternation in Australia, of course, but has really uh, kicked up a level or two over the past week because of what J.K. Rowling has said publicly. I brought you some of that last week. She's invited an enormous amount of criticism and abuse her way, but she is courageously and intelligently standing her ground. I want to bring in Catherine McGregor, Sky News commentator, uh, opinion writer, and, of course, a transgender woman uh, yourself. Catherine, tell us your perspective on how this debate is playing out in the UK, why it's so toxic and why J.K. Rowling has found herself in the crosshairs. Yeah, look, Chris, we could go on all night about this because there's quite a context to this. There was a, a gender recognition statute uh, brought forward in the UK and it generated considerable debate and backlash. Now, the things that... the To try to keep this one a bit nuanced because... I'm a trans person. I, d I don't want to harm anyone. I'm not out to make the lives harder, as I once said when I was responding to some comments of Margaret Courts. But disagreement on very fundamental matters is not hate speech. And I actually tweeted in support of J.K. Rowling to just around Christmas last year, just before I finally once and for all left Twitter, because, as you know, it's a sewer and the vitriol directed at her was, frankly, off the reservation. I've never seen insanity of that and profanity of that order. Uh, I think her position is entirely reasonable. But to your... Basically, the quiet Australians out there will find both the language and the concepts of most of this stuff just insane. But the simple fact of it is this. She has basically said that she's taken umbrage at a term, people who menstruate, and said, isn't there a word for that, namely women, and she has put her hand up for the rights of women. Now, I want to make a point really clearly here. I call myself a transsexual. I have not appropriated the term woman. I found gender dysphoria distressing, and unless you've lived through it, it's very hard to explain. I am an old style. Uh, I probably date myself. I'm in the sort of footsteps of Carlotta and women of that generation who had no difficulty using the term transsexual. None of us ever thought that by adjusting our physical identity to try to fit to adjust to our feelings as a matter of sheer survival, none of us demanded that we, be that we claim the title of womanhood or appropriate that experience. And the backlash now, which is in, a, in one sense as dispiriting as this cancel culture is becoming, it's actually amusing to watch the left devouring itself because the people with the most skin in the game are gender critical feminists who are writing, you know, who write from a very theoretical abstract position and uh, trans activists who are in the main extremely abusive, unhinged, and they inhabit a toxic conformist ghetto. Their slogan is, we will not be erased, but they insist on erasing anyone who doesn't conform to their linguistic gymnastics and their version of reality. And let me make it very clear, I think Rowling is correct on this issue. She is entitled to make these points in a civil manner, which she has done, and to have this insane frenzy that has developed around this is dispiriting. And the so-called activists and leaders of this so-called community who are leading this charge are doing themselves little service because in the end, when real women wake up to what is at stake with half of this stuff, the backlash will be ferocious. At the moment, it is being fought out by people with pr very profound ideological convictions. But mothers of daughters, mothers of daughters who play sport, uh, who may have to share dressing rooms and other spaces, are going to revolt. And what the, what the activists are trying to do is achieve a chilling effect because they think if you tear down statues or if you decapitate, metaphorically, J.K. Rowling, then imagine the chilling effect at the water cooler in most workplaces. So it's a long-winded answer, but I actually think she's conducted herself with vastly more dignity than her detractors. And the simple fact is I, I, I have never purported to change sex. I have transitioned to the best of my ability from being born male 
not assigned birth. I was born a male, which is why I've never changed my birth certificate. And we could go on all night about that as well. I think the, the capitulation of states allowing birth certificates to be re-engineered is one of the most obscene capitulations and distortions of reality that I've ever beheld. And, and we're now getting people wanting death certificates to reflect climate change. So you can bracket your life with a lie. I've got too much respect for my parents who knew that they'd uh, had a little boy who found that very uncomfortable and transitioned, and I've got too much respect for real women to call them cisgendered women or people who menstruate and then brackets that may include some people who identify as male. It has gone far enough, and I overheard Brendan O'Neill, it's about time someone with the resources and courage of J.K. Rowling drew a line in the sand. Catherine, I wanted to get you on the show because I knew that you would uh, bring great insight uh, to this debate and give us uh, some clarity of thought. So I might leave it there and say that that's the most fascinating one-question interview I've ever conducted. Sorry about being verbose and apologies to your audience. No apologies at all. That was fascinating and well-articulated. Thanks for joining us again, Catherine McGregor.